Live from New York, it's Ask a Bunch of People Who Do Python. It's a Python <laughs> party here at Adafruit. Ooh. We've got all sorts of Pythonistas and Pythonisters here at the Adafruit Factory downtown Manhattan. Not only is it me, Lady Ada, and Mr. Lady Ada, as always, we also have three special guests, the most special of all guests possible, Dan, Katney, and Scott, Team Python. We've got an exciting, snake-filled show for you tonight. <laughs> Uh, all sorts of news from the Python world and beyond. Let's kick it off with uh, what's going on tonight's show, Mr. Lady Ada. On uh, tonight's show, I'll be playing the part of Snake Charmer. Yay! <laughs> um, the code is Python Party, 10% off in the Adafruit store, all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Or I want to remember to turn the code off to get to 10% off everything except for Adabox and gift certificates. It supports us, an open source hardware company here in New York City. We make the electronics. We ship the electronics. We make the code. Don't we look off? We, we should try. be supported by you. This is Ada for Uniform. Show and tell. People are around the world showing and sharing their projects. Lady will go over those. Pack the mailbag. We'll read your letters to us. Time travel. Look back in the world. Makers, hackers, artists, engineers, current events, and more. Made in New York City. Some factory footage. Some 3D printing videos from Noah and Pedro. We have a new product. We have some top secret. We'll answer your questions. Where should they ask them? On Discord. Discord. <laughs> yeah. Adafruit.it slash Discord. That's where we'll see all of your questions. We'll have a trivia question, all that and more on. You guessed it. Ask an engineer. Yay. All right. Well, um, let's get started. We'll pay some bills real quick. But one thing, I was in Discord and people said, I said, mm -hmm. there's going to be cake on Wednesday. And they're like, cake's a lie, cake's a lie, because it's yeah. a funny thing to say. Mm -hmm. But look. But they're wrong. Maybe we'll show the cake off. So this is a Circuit Python cake. How old is Circuit Python, Scott? Uh, just over a year. year old. Okay. Looking pretty yeah, good for a one year old. All right. Yeah. Um, Lady From when Ada, we decided to call it that. Yeah. I can look at it. I can find it in my email or something. January yeah. 9th. Yeah. Is that what it was? We'll look it up. That's not the trivia question, but we'll look it up. <laughs> um, okay. So, Lady Ada, let's pay some bills. Yes. Um, first up, we have some free stuff. That's right. If you order from the Adafruit shop, which you should because it helps support us and all the stuff that you know and love, you can pick up a, um, sorry, a, uh, uh, $99 or more, you'll get a Permaproto half size breadboard. Uh, $199 or more, you'll get free UPS ground shipping. And $299 or more, you'll get a free Circuit Python friendly Circuit Playground Express. Okay. So we're on theme. Um, don't forget, we have UPS, Postal, and DHL. If you're international, use DHL. If you want to make sure it gets to you with tracking and all that, UPS. Thank you, Kenny. And okay. Postal is pretty good oh, just yeah. know that it may take a little bit That's longer if in your if you're in new york city and you check out before 11 a.m we have same day delivery just look at the zip code <laughs> and more um show and tell we had a lot of people on the show and tell this week that's right we did we had a lot of adafruiters yeah uh we had colin we want to we'll do this for animation first okay. oh yeah we paid for okay. those animations okay, 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 okay. animation get through <laughs> um, i'm renting those no, no i mean yeah <laughs> It's a big, you know, it's redesigning everything? Yeah, I don't know. A lot of pixels. Yeah. Uh, we had Colin who made some capacitive touch drum pads with MIDI input into his computer so he could drop some fat beats. He's uh, making some cool music that people are going to hear real soon uh, in some Adafruit videos. No and Pedro showed off this week's 3D Hangouts project. It's a fume extractor add-on for the PC fan uh, fan all-in-one thing we have in the store. They uh, added a little plastic grid that goes on the front and adds a uh, carbon filter. Phil B is working on eyes. Uh, the Raspberry Pi eyeball bonnet, which he worked on about a year ago, is getting an upgrade with the new uh, 240 by 240 IPS TFT displays. Apparently the eyes look amazing. And we'll hopefully see some good videos and photos soon. So it's a preview. Coding Pro added a new bot feature. Code DB allows you to upload and retrieve code that's written in Markdown. Also has Maker Sandbox, which is like a site all about the bot with some bot stats. Uh, Jay has 860 or so NeoPixels in like a big grid, 32 by 30 or something. On a sousaphone, it has all sorts of animations and like, like events and like it can do text, and it can do um, tone recognition and like Spectroscopy, no, not spectroscopy, uh, spectrum analyzer, um, hearts, text, sousaphone, yeah. jokes, all sorts of stuff on this. Skulls. Skulls. Yeah, it's pretty intense animations on this NeoPixel screen on the sousaphone. Check that out if you are a tuba fan. JMK wrote a notepad app for his birthday, and it's a gift to all of you, so check out 
Jam Chaos on YouTube for more details on how to get this notepad app. Also, he made a cat selector on Glitch. Cat slider. Is it cat slider? Cat slider. Cat, I think it's a cat slider. Cat slider. Cat it's slider. The cat sli slide off to the side. Yeah, you can slide slash select oh. them. Whatever. It's a cat cat kitten party mm -hmm. over at Jam Chaos. Uh, Techniac uh, got a laser cutter for a few days and made some custom business coin cards. Uh, laser cut QR codes and gifts and, and for a robot group. And then Blitz City is making a knitted Blinka and has a turntable kit that she's 3D printing. And that's what we had on okay. Show and Tell. All participants on the Show and Tell get an As Seen on the Show and Tell sticker. Or this week it's like digital. People can get a digital phone. Yeah, some people ask for digital stuff. Yep. We're going to do things it's with it. It's part of our Adafruit Live Series of shows. Um, on my tomorrow, JP, John Park's workshop is on. Last week he did the synth project. Do check that out on our YouTube channel. He'll be doing that tomorrow. I think he has another project in line with this. This is an update. He's going to yeah. make it more so. Okay. Mailbag. We read these letters to our State of the Fruit each week. Y'all are going to be at State of the Fruit this week. Yeah. So you'll hear, you'll hear the one that we're going to do next week on the show. So it's like a preview. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's exciting. Shh. Um, this one, this is from Roberto Wowzers. A couple years ago, I picked up Snap Circuit Box from y'all's shop. The boy ignored it for a good two years. We recently moved into a new house, and he, my eight-year-old, came across it unprompted. He completed a few projects. I guess it took time and less force upon to interest him. Thanks again, Roberto. Okay. All right. Snapping um, away. Okay, so we're here today with Dan, Katney, and Scott. Um, this is our Banner Code Plus community. Um, maybe y'all can introduce yourself, starting with <laughs> Dan. Take it away. I'm Dan Halbert, and I've been working for Adafruit since August, and on a volunteer basis before that on the core part of CircuitPython. Okay. Okay, Katni. I'm Katni Rumbor. Uh, I have been part-time with Adafruit since October and full-time since January. I do a lot of work on libraries and guides uh, for CircuitPython, a lot of testing. Do you guys want to come in a little bit? Yeah, well, yeah. I think yeah, it's good. Yeah, scoot. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. As long as we don't fall over. <laughs> I think we had we had more people earlier, so we yeah. Had All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm Scott Shawcroft. I go by Tan Newt online, even though it's all run together. Um, I was hired by Adafruit to port MicroPython to the SAMD21, which became CircuitPython, and that was in August of 2016. September, something yeah. like that. Um, yeah, figuring out my timeline. Yeah. So I've, I've, uh, I was the first person in the core stuff. So if you find bugs, it's my fault. And uh, now we're, I kind of run the whole project Yay. on top of just the core code. All right. All right. So good Python. Well, that's why we're all here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna pseudo interview you, sort of. Okay. And then we'll, then we'll show some more stuff. So uh, let's start with Dan. Dan, what are the things that you work on in Circuit Python? I work on um, a lot of the I/O stuff right now. Like right now, we're adding um, input devices to CircuitPython 3.0, like touchpad support and gamepad support. Mm -hmm. And I worked on um, <clears throat> various other, like I guess, what some of the analog I/O stuff before that. I can't even remember. Fixing my code. You yeah, a lot of bug yeah. fixing. <laughs> you, a lot of bug fixing. And there's a lot, a lot of, of not, not, not Scott's bugs, also bugs from the, yeah, the so. software that we have to use to work on. Right. <laughs> on but you also started with fixing USB stuff, I think. Right. I started originally because I had a project that I wanted to use the USB stuff on that right. Scott had written. He had built a keyboard that ran CircuitPython. Circuit mm -hmm. And I had a different, uh, different project that I wanted to use, and it seemed perfect for me. So. I added mouse support and I added some, I sort of expanded the keyboard support yep. for an assistive technology project. And that's how I got started at Adafruit. And, mm -hmm. and, you, and you're kind of known for a couple other things though. Um, you made the, there's a command in. That's right. In, I, I, I wrote the original version of the more command in Unix. in Unix. Which everyone loves. Right, which I wrote in 1978. So handy. <laughs> And uh, when I was at, uh, at Berkeley as still a grad student. Still in use. It's still in use, so a lot of people say, but what about less? But no, but more, more is more. More was the first one, yeah. More <laughs> is more than less. Right, and there's even, a, there's even a Wikipedia entry about the command. Sweet. Which I didn't write, somebody else did. Mm -hmm. did. Did they put your name? Like it was yeah, a there's a link on there to the original history of the more command where I explain I, why I wrote it, which has to do with beeping terminals and stuff like that. Okay. <laughs> you, can read, you can read the story. There's nothing, it's, you know, some of the, uh, one of the things I remember reading was there's nothing as permanent as a temporary hack. 
So like you made a temporary hack to solve some beeping terminal, and now it's like it's forever, <laughs> 40 years. Forever, forever, forever. <laughs> forever. Also, at the time I wrote it, more was like the Unix command with the longest name. Okay. Because it was four letters long. Oh, <laughs> I was Dur, yeah, okay. Well, I yeah. Good, better than Mur. I'm glad you didn't call it like me, MR. MR, or, yeah, no, 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 that would be a mistake. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay, and right. I'm going to combine a couple things here. So, Katni, you, you have a guide that you did that I think a lot of people probably know. And that's kind of how you got started here. Mm -hmm. what, what did, What's going on what here? Is, Why are you attaching these lines? What is this? And I have a little video. So you made a piano out of fruit. I did. Why did you do that? Well, <laughs> Why did, <laughs> the whole thing started with getting the Circuit Playground Express, which was actually, an, I mean, it wasn't done on purpose. Um, I w found, uh, I forgot my first Raspberry Pi, and I wanted to buy um, Sense Hat, but it was too big for the Pi Zero W. Um, so I tried to recreate it with more sensors and that got really expensive really fast and then found the Circuit Playground which had a lot of stuff built in. Um, so I got one of those, got it home, looked really complicated, Ooh, yeah. didn't touch it for two weeks. Um, then when I finally got into it, uh, I ended up stumbling into Circuit Python, which I was trying to use uh, or learn Python at the time. And um, so decided to do a project with it. Um, I had a lot of help from Scott. <laughs> Um, and what ended up happening is each time I would do something else with the project, he would say, hey, you should update this library that we're working on. And of <laughs> course, I told him, there's no way I can update this library that you're working on. I know nothing about this. And he said, yes, you can. And help me we through believe it. in you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and by the end of it, I was, I was breaking my own code with this, with this library for the guide and had to go continue to go back. And so basically it went from just me trying to learn how to do it to turning it into the, my, my first guide. Um, I picked key limes because they're tiny mm. and I thought they would be able to, I'd be able to have enough of them to do the whole, the whole set, which when I When I first saw it, it looked like this, like I was thinking it was like normal sized limes. I was like, oh my God, it's like a playground. I was like, hey. <laughs> so I built one, a giant one. Just like your this. hand comes in and it's just like, oh wait, <laughs> like so scales cool. totally. Cause it's like, there's this dark background. Mm -hmm. So you wrote this guide and then lately you've been working on. Well, the, I, I'd say the essentials guide. Yeah. Cause your, your name's on it. So it's like. It's, it's, the, all you. it's the most essential guide we have for circuit. It's there's none so, more so essential. Five, so what's been going on with this guy? Because it's getting it's getting more comprehensive and bigger. And it is. What's the um, goal of the guide? <laughs> the goal of the guide is is to be the next step. We have a welcome to circuit Python guide that explains what it is and how to get it installed and how to edit your code and that sort of thing. But there's and you a wrote lot that of, too, right? I did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of built-in stuff that people want to know how to use, and we don't didn't have a centralized location for all of that. Um, so now we do, we have a place to point people. So it explains, you know, how to use digital in app, how to use analog, how to use LEDs, how to use um, UART and PWM and that sort of thing. And it has uh, wiring diagrams for all the ones that actually you have to add anything to. And there's example code uh, for everything in a, in a solid explanation for how all of it works. So the plan Caleb, is- Caleb Kraft said this is like the best thing about CircuitPython. I mean, like yeah. your stuff's great too, but he said like, this is awesome because for most programming languages, you don't get something like this. Right, yeah. exactly. And since the whole goal of CircuitPython is to bring people into it and we, we need an avenue for that and having mm -hmm. a guide that we can point people to is pretty crucial. So yeah. um, that was kind of the goal with that. And we're continuing to update it as we get more stuff. Um, and uh, we've got it in all the other guides. So if you go to the guide for your board, you don't have to search around for things. It's, it's all right there. Right. Okay. Sweet. Um, so I'm going to skip around a little bit. We're going to get Scott in a second. Um, but you've been helping out with the um, plotter, plotter, yes. plotter of the week. So we have, um, I guess, um, if you like Raspberry Pi, one of the things they do that not a lot of people know is they have this thing called Moo. And it's an open source Python editor. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's supposed to be simple. It's supposed to be easy for kids. Yep. And one of the best features is the fonts get big. Yeah. And um, Lady Ada worked on this plotting feature so you can graph data. Mm -hmm. um, I so think it's so handy because it's very hard to read numbers. Yeah. So um, I remember you asking me about that very early on when we started working on it. What did I ask? I really like the plotter. When can we do a plotter? Okay. We did a plotter. Yep. We, we I to, added we it. We got to check that to do off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pink. Um, so ben. what? Um, <laughs> What things can people do in the plotter? What or what guides have you have you done so far that they've been so able to? So we have three right now. Um, we have it for uh, for the light sensor on the Circuit Playground Express, for the accelerometer for motion, 
on the circuit playground express and um temperature temperature the temperature sensor um and and these are all things that obviously have changes you, you can you can interact with the board and and cause the things to change and and so we we did a real quick explanation we have it's, uh, it's all short code it's very short mm -hmm. and you, you pull it up, you click one button, and you have a plot in front of you. So you can move the board around and you'll see the plot change as you do it. You can shine a flashlight on the on the board and see it change. So it's all instantaneous. It's great Yeah, response. like instant feedback. Yeah. So we have one of the videos. We did temperature. And that one's fun because we got to bring out the hot air gun. So um, mm -hmm. let's play the video. You did in good order. Thank you. You said something. Right. Sensor graphing with the plotter featuring CircuitPython and Moo. Today we'll be plotting temperature. The Circuit Playground Express has a built-in thermistor. That's a temperature sensor, and we can plot that pretty easily. Using this 10-line CircuitPython code, we can read the thermistor, which is a temperature sensing resistor, and calculate the temperature in Celsius, and then plot it. You can see right now it's just plotting the room temperature. But what I can do is take this ice cube in a bag, hold it up to the thermistor, and you can see the temperature starts dropping. We can also make the temperature rise by putting some hot air on it. For example, this hot air gun. Now be careful, you don't want to overheat your circuit playground. So just set it to be about 100 degrees, and you can tell when I heat up the board, the temperature starts going up really fast. That's how easy it is to plot temperature with CircuitPython, Moo, and your Circuit Playground Express. Okay, and then um, Entol, Entol on Twitter, Nicholas, he's the uh, lead developer on this. Mm -hmm. And uh, he helped us out with this neat idea. We wanted to have um, IDEs be transparent so you can uh, teach code through them and have videos and, and show some of the things. So this is um, one of the videos that we did as a test. So this is the accelerometer and it allows you to see exactly what's going on um, with the person and then the board and then real time with the plotter. So if you ever wanted to see like, oh, how does like gravity work or these things. So we're gonna be posting up one of those um, every single week and we have that in our Adafruit Daily mm -hmm. newsletter. So it's called Plot of the Week. So that just went out today. Plot of the Week. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. celebrating over 2,000 subscribers mm -hmm. as of 2018, yeah. which is, which is kind of neat because it's 2018. One per year, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Into the future. All right. Well, Scott, you're here. Okay. Yes. And so you've been working on a lot of stuff. Is, 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 uh, yeah. is CircuitPython awesome? <laughs> it's definitely awesome. Um, so you're in, you, maybe you could talk a little bit about what CircuitPython is, and mm -hmm. then we're in 3 alpha. And, yes, um, we are. And I want to use all these graphics soon. Yeah, we got these graphics. So we got to use them. So, so mm -hmm. um, yeah. maybe talk about why you did it, where you came from before that, because we knew you from, you, you were running your own hardware company. I was trying, yeah. yeah. So I, uh, I used to work at Google, and I was not super happy there. So I decided to take a break and do my own thing. At the time, I was really into drones and quadcopters. So I got into hardware, and was doing uh, open source software and hardware development for flight controllers, uh, which is the brains that makes it actually fly like you want. Um, it takes your inputs and adjusts the motors to achieve what you want. And uh, I did it modular, which is not the uh, smartest thing in the world. I used really expensive connectors, and so. But it's uh, so cool. It was really well engineered. Were those the I, ones from like the Edison, the Intel Edison users? Yeah, like, they're yeah. Like, they're like Sony connectors. They're like, oh my god, they're just like precise, tiny. They're Hirose. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're 0.4 millimeter pitch. They're like two dollars a piece. Um, really well engineered, but it's not like not ship. price wise. <laughs> Uh, so I sold about 10 of those and I was like, do I really want to keep doing this? And I had been on show and tell regularly because I didn't have a real job. So I was showing all the process of that and I did a show and tell actually from Macrofab in Houston, which was fun. They let me come down and see the boards actually be made. Um, but it was pretty clear that I wasn't going to make enough money to sustain myself much longer. So I was like, oh, I'm looking for a job. So I came back on show and tell and I was like, hey, I'm looking for a job. I posted the jobs board, but I haven't heard anything. And the next day you emailed me, and I was like, Yay! Pet, petting my cat sitting on the floor and showed my girlfriend. And like, you were on um, Desk of Lady 8 in the chat rooms, and when Lamore mm -hmm. was doing a tester series, yeah, you were was, like, tell me more, tell me more. That worked out was, really well, because you were doing testers. Yeah, I, I, 
I took all of that advice and, and I've even directed people to it since then. Like, if you want to know tester stuff, those yeah. Desk Lady Adas are still really useful. Yay, um, testers. Because Macrofab, you could write instructions and they did all the testing yeah. for But you still have stuff. to make the jig and it's, mm-hmm. it's always a little bit more complicated than you think. Yeah. Like yeah. We're working on the Metro Tester. You saw that. It's you know you have to get it. You have to get it like solid. Oh yeah. So you do, you were doing firmware for these things. You were doing some, yeah. So some I was little stuff. Yeah. So I was actually taking uh, some open source flight controller software called Betaflight and modifying it for my boards, which is something I do very regularly for Adafruit with CircuitPython now too. Um, so that got me understanding all of the embedded work. And then uh, after I replied to your email saying yes, I would love to work with you, you say like well we want you to port MicroPython to the SAMD21. And I was super excited. I've, since that day, I've not touched my drone stuff, uh, except to get rid of the rest of the inventory I had. You have uh, a box somewhere, right? I have like a couple copies of the stuff that We'll I get had, back to make a CircuitPython drone. Um, we'll get there. Yeah. I'm over it. I got this. <laughs> there's, these really, there's these really cool connectors I want to show you. Yeah. Um, yeah OK. Have, so then you started doing. Um, uh, like Python on hardware. Yeah, yeah, and I had I had actually had experience with Python before. So when I was in college, I was a TA for the Intro to Programming course, and I actually taught a couple quarters of the same course, but in Python rather than Java. So I had that experience of beginners in, in Python, awesome. um, and I knew that Python was a great way to get people um, into programming. So when you asked me about that, like I hadn't actually heard of MicroPython, but I was like, this is amazing. Well, you showed up and you're like, oh, I'm doing all this low-level SAMD21 stuff. And I'm like, mm, <laughs> that sounds yeah. like something I want. It was, it was a good match. I was super excited. I can't tell you how excited I was. And, now, okay. and I, so, somehow after all of that hacking, you're so excited you're doing more chips and more boards. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. So I guess fast forward. So you've been pounding away at this um, MicroPython variant called CircuitPython. Yep. And yeah. it runs on pretty much all of our hardware now. Uh, SAMD 21s and the ESP 8266. Yeah, I, I have a family photo. We have to add a couple. Uh-huh. Look yeah. at the link. Yep. Um, Itsy Bitsy, and then uh, we also have the ESP 8266 is not there, yeah. and then the M4 mm-hmm. is new, which we'll talk about today. Yeah. So hard at work at the the bigger brother or the younger brother of the SAMD 21. Yeah. Um, bigger <laughs> bigger brother, but still younger, I guess. Um, the SAMD 51, which we talked about a little bit. Um, Lots, lots faster, lots more RAM. Uh, I was realizing I started working on that like last June, something. So it's been a long time coming. Well, we got the ND, we you know we sent NDA, so we got data sheets and some samples a little early, like some about yeah. boards. And when we were working on the seventy twenty one, I was it was always thinking like, hey, this is just a stepping stone. To yeah, the totally. One, I never sort of expected. I was actually surprised we got it to fit. So I was like, well, you know, like this is a good beginner thing, and that's why a lot of our guides are very beginner focused. Yep. And then knowing, you know, because I kind of had this NDA, I knew that there was this chip coming out that would be so much more powerful. Right. I was like, that's actually what we'll be like. Right. Fo- like that's going to be the Circuit Python chipset, mm-hmm. but we just had to like build everything up right. until then. And I, I still knew took th- a year. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's been a lot of work. We can attest to that, but. Um, the idea of having multiple platforms that are all uniform for CircuitPython was something that we really cared about with, with CircuitPython. And we have like 70 plus drivers and we've spent a lot of work on in that time and in that year also focusing on drivers yeah. and the documentation. Summersoft and Catney did a great job getting all of our API docs And that stuff takes a l- I remember you were working on the libraries and we were working on documenting and all those pull requests. It takes months to do yeah. a good job i mean like you were like oh how hard can it be to do <laughs> it actually takes a long time to get it, getting everything you know travis and like mm-hmm. set up and like yep. the output correct and like the urls and then we changed the format to make it um upgradable long term with the library management system yeah. getting that all in place we had to make so many decisions mm-hmm. and work together or the entire community to come up with like okay what's like our naming conventions we're still like you know yep. figuring that out like yeah. lowercase or uppercase or whatever right. Um, for some things. But we but, have Adabot to help us. But now it's, yeah, now we have automation and stuff in place. I think the automation especially is what's really great. Super handy. Very handy. And that really, like, going into 2018, I kind of inherited this role of being the project lead simply because I was the first person on it. Um, but in terms of setting direction, it's thinking about CircuitPython larger than just the core code that I started working on and Dan started working on. But more broadly is the community. Shout out to the Discord, which 
we started yeah. last year. And that's what a lot of people say. You don't just get the code. You don't just get yeah. the part where you get to hang out in Discord. You get to participate. Um, we got this graphic from asking people in mm -hmm. the chat. Which Kat we, Katney was the person. Were you the one? I was. Yay! <laughs> Katney's right. the reason we that have a code plus community. Yay! You won! Um, Yay, you won! <laughs> yes. We're here. <laughs> Yeah, so cake, cake for you. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, well, so going out. into 2018, it's all about like Circuit Python is a much bigger project rather yeah. than just the core code that yeah. we started with. But the okay. code's good. So but it's um, yeah, we're it's just to, a piece of it. We're up to three alpha. Mm -hmm. and alpha have, four. Yeah, we'll have graphics for two and one. I'll just go back in time and do that. But um, yep. what are some of the things in Circuit Python three alpha to look forward to as it gets to? Well, the the big headlining feature of 3.0 in general is the SAMD 51 support. Um, that is core to what 3.0 has. Um, so a, a lot of the work that we've done is is redoing a lot of the stuff. Um, there is also NRF52 support. Preliminary NRF52. But it's there, it's there. Yep, so if you want to try it, give that, a, give that a shot. I think 3.0 or 4.0 is going to end up being where we really put the nice polish on the NRF52 stuff mm -hmm. um, because we don't want to wait for it in order yeah. to get 3.0 stable. Yep. Um, but in in terms of new stuff, we have, uh, I just added I2S support for audio output, uh, which is exciting. Uh, I also f changed the um, the way that memory is allocated a little bit, yeah, which some means heap optimizations. you could theoretically uh, have more code, more libraries loaded than you could previously. And then you pushed to upstream as well, so that's going to... Uh, it's not an upstream yet. You submitted a pull request. Damien is aware of it, okay. and he wanted to actually let it soak and see how... Okay. Because that's so core to how it works, um, he wants to use CircuitPython as a testing ground, which is that's awesome. totally what it's there for. Um, okay. Yep. So this is a free-for-all. This is, was a question in YouTube. Even though it's not in Discord, you should go to Discord, but I'll, I'll ask it anyways. So if you have links or resources for CircuitPython, where, where should they go? And I'll click to the places. So they should definitely check out a guide that Kenny wrote. Yes. So that's 100%. Learn 100%. Data for Doug yeah, that's where click, you start. They can click your name and see all of your guides. That's probably a good start too, right? That would be. Um, a lot of the intro stuff I'm, I'm on, even just as a contributor, so that would definitely get you where you want to go. We have, and if, you, if you search CircuitPython on Learn, it... It's also the featured guys, an yeah. introduction to CircuitPython, and then you can go into circuit, CircuitPython Essentials. Those are mm -hmm. the, the two guides that you've yeah. written that are like start with keys. Okay. And then we also have Discord. Yeah, and if you're interested in actually like hacking on it, Discord's the great a good place to start. We also have the awesome Circuit Python mm -hmm. list, which is it's all the resources in one spot. Totally, it's in GitHub, and anyone can contribute to it. That's GitHub.com/slash/AdafruitSlash/awesome-dash/CircuitPython. We have Adafruit Daily newsletter. Mm -hmm. Sign up. Go to AdafruitDaily.com. Python for microcontrollers is the box you want to check. Yeah. Yeah. On there. And, and we cover a bunch of, we cover Python, microcontrollers, MicroPythons, mm -hmm. all about, we, we kind of get it all in the mix. Yep. Okay, we got a shout out. Can't believe how far this team has come with CircuitPython. Thanks, Dan, Katni, and Scott. Yay! All right, and then you have, you, you're going to be an event soon. <gasps> yes, we are. What is this? Where are you going? What's this? What's happening? We are going to PyCon. Yay! Yay! U.S. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. And, are we <laughs> <in> <laughs> and Adafruit's a, a sponsor. Yes. We yes. are. It's yeah. very exciting. And the tickets sold out as of today. I saw that on Twitter. Oh, yeah? Yep. yep. So therefore, we can show the giveaway that they're going to have. Because there's now, because if now you didn't, can, if so everybody can get hyped. Yeah. So right. this is kind of, a, it's not out yet, don't ask, but um, here it is. Yeah. It's the Gemma M0 PyCon 2018. And I think we have. Um, Limited edition. Yeah. We have one over here. We have one over here. So I'm going to try to do this through the green screen. Though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at this. Carter, thanks for the it, links. That's how big it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh no! Like it's, three it's, feet. It's Scott's face. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, you have can to click. Can you over? click? No, can you uh, click the lock button? Careful. The most rightmost button. Okay. That one, yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go, and I can. And you I can, can turn it over. Look, no, it's, <laughs> it's like it's a frisbee. <laughs> Should we turn it over? Yeah, turn yeah. it over. And uh, we got permission because um, you can't you can't use a Python logo unless it's like for Python folks. And you have to get okay, and we had to say here it is, and we showed a picture, and like we really like this. So there's going to be thousands of these given away. Mm-hmm. Can pet the nice Gemma. So we got that like nice gold Python. Yeah, it looks really good. Worked out because yeah. the ground plane was right in the correct location. Andy. Yeah. Okay, so that's coming up. The dates it's in May. I don't remember when. It's May something. May, yeah, we're going to be there May 10th through 15th. Yep. It's in Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah. So if you are there, take a look at uh, the Open Spaces board. 
Uh, we'll definitely have at least one of those, and then we are going to be around for one day of the hackathon as well. So feel free to ping us in Discord, and yeah. we may be around doing impromptu, non-open space, actual interactive stuff as well. Yeah. We, we have some ideas for projects that people could do. Instead of just plugging this in and say, huh, it works. We have yeah. some ideas for yeah. projects, that, yeah, challenge projects workshops. that people can do. Okay. Mm -hmm. G generally speaking, Adafruit is a company, we're not, we don't do booths. Right. We just don't do that. We'd rather hang out with people and do things. Yep. And, Which and is so much better. Yeah. And yeah. we're not really there to sell. We're just, we're, right. we're actually there to give that stuff away. I mean, they're in the mm -hmm. bags. Um, all right. So they can use the Discord channel. Maybe we'll make one. Yeah, we have for, an events category. Mm -hmm. Okay. We can, we, add, one, we can add it in there. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. It works out. All right. Well, thank you, Dan, Kenny, and Scott. Okay. Thanks for having us. Yes. Yeah. Well, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. We're going to do some more We're going to do some more stuff, though. Okay. Time travel already? Yeah. Well, this is sort of a time travel that that's that's relevant. You knew, you know, James McGurkin. Mm hmm Yeah, he he's he does AI. He knows a friend of mine, so we both helped him move into his house. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so and you, he was like, "My friend is awesome. You, you moved, should meet you him." You moved a couch or something. Or yeah, something. like we were definitely carrying furniture upstairs. Okay. Oh boy. So in addition to that moving and, and couch stuff, he does AI. Mm -hmm. so, yes. Um, so James was here, and Lamore and James talked about AI for about half an hour. Mm -hmm. um, then, then it turned into an hour. Then it turned into like an hour and a half. Then it was like two hours. Yeah. So we edit down to about 50 minutes. And this is like one of the only um, conversations that I know of where there is a Google engineer and a hardware engineer talking mm -hmm. about AI, all the software, all the um, interesting things, because it's scary. It's unknown, unknown. Um, but when you see the video, I think you get a sense that at least James cares about this stuff. And he he's thinking really, really does. He's thinking really deeply about mm -hmm. it and how people will use it. And Google right. has a new AIY kit, which is DIY for AI, which is super smart mm -hmm. because if you have makers doing stuff, I think it has a better shot because right. we all get to participate in some way. So a lot mm -hmm. of it's open source, if not most of it. Um, you run on a Raspberry Pi. So we have a little highlight video. Um, it's only 47 seconds because the other one it would be a really long <laughs> show. We watched it yeah. all day. It's a good video, though. Yeah. I've watched so it. Here's, some, here's just some of the demos that we um, put together. This is an object classifier. For some objects, it does a great job. 99% Granny Smith Apple. But this is one of the important things about artificial intelligence. It's not perfect all the time. Cleaver, meat cleaver, you know, fountain pen, ballpoint pen. So the angles change that. This particular pen, as attractive as it is with this MIT logo on it, um, it doesn't really know what it is. It thinks it's a bobsled. Um, so these kinds of errors that the, that the, the software gives are going to be what users need to work with and to understand that artificial intelligence is just as limited as any other technology that they're working with. AI. Uh -huh. Do it yourself AI. Uh -huh. but, exactly. Good branding there. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, be sure to watch the whole thing. Um, Phil B will be at Maker Fair, and I said, "Hey, can I play that video of that project you're going to show?" And he's like, "Yeah, sure." Okay, that was a dream or a nightmare. Y'all can decide. Um, so, open source hardware. We normally do our um, guides yeah. during the section. So we have one thousand. 435. Okay. Do you want to talk about some of the guides? Yeah, we don't have pick? tons of guides. We've got really good guides this week. Um, we've got uh, Aaron St. Blaine wrote a how to cast a 3D printed necklace in metal and pewter using, uh, you know, you 3D print the mold insert and then you use like a silicone material to make the mold and you can cast pewter. It's really fun and it's, uh, you know, a pretty easy way to do metal casting at home without needing like a huge furnace. Yeah, this week's 3D Hangouts project, the desktop fume extractor, will show the video. Comes with googly eyes, even. And uh, we have a guide this week for uh, the new product, the Metro M4 Express featuring SAMD51, which we'll chat about when we talk about new products. Mm -hmm. And that okay. was the guides. All right, and we'll have some more guides coming out this week or so. Um, all right, so we have some other stuff, um, 3D printing. Want to see some 3D printing? I would like to see some 3D printing. Okay. You're on page 3D printing every single week. Their trampoline project that Katni worked on with Noam Pedro was in Maker Update. It's Sweet. a newsletter. There's like 500 Maker newsletters. <laughs> so. But this is a good one. Yeah. 
Well, no, they're all good. They're all good. But it's hard to sort. When I said, did you get the uh, Maker like Newsletter? The Maker Newsletter. Which one? The Maker Pro, Maker Maker, Maker Live, Maker... The Makey Makey Newsletter? Makey, yeah. I have that one, too. Yeah. I heard that one. Okay, so this is the fume extractor. Take it away, Noah Pedro. Here's how to turn a PC fan into a solder fume extractor using a 3D printed retainer. This carbon filter will catch most of the solder smoke and gets rid of the smell of fumes. To 3D print the part, we use the 0.8mm nozzle which allows for printing a bigger layer height and extrusion width. This uses more material and actually reduces the total print time. Reducing the print speed and increasing the active cooling fan made it possible to print without any supports. Limiting the retraction count reduces the number of movements in the feeder, which lowers the stress in the material. This part took just an hour and a half, which would have taken 4 hours with a regular 0.4mm nozzle. The first layer had great bed adhesion thanks to the wide brim around the perimeter. Once the bed has fully cooled down, the part becomes much easier to remove. The bridging on this part was a bit extreme and surprisingly didn't need any cleanup. For a full list of slice settings, be sure to check out our guide linked in the description. To fit the carbon filter into the retainer, you'll need to cut it down to size with a pair of scissors. The filter slides into the holder and is pushed down all the way through. The retainer fits over the hood of the fan and clips onto the edges. The air suction from the fan is actually pretty decent and this allows you to work at a minimal distance. I find that it catches most of the solder smoke which is great when you're working indoors with other people. For the price, this fan has a decent size and it doesn't take too much space on a desk. The design is free to download and it can be customized to fit your project. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more projects from Adafruit. Pedro will be on 3D Hangouts every Wednesday. They had their show today. Indeed. And here is their speed up video of the week. products um don't forget ada box eight. 08 is going to be shipping late june early july and it's going to be robot themed that's all yes. we can say for now and we'll, we'll talk more about it later but, but but if you like robots there's gonna be some really fun robots robot yeah. friends not robot enemies no we were kind of <laughs> stuck with that yeah so only the friendliest robots if you liked ada box 7 you're we gonna got, really like ada box we got 8. all those make robot friend posters so it'd be weird to stop mm -hmm. having robot yeah. friends yeah We'd have to like cross it so off. Just like, oh, yeah, oh no, change my yeah. mind, hate you. Like, <laughs> get a sticker. Not best friend we could, put, we could put a sticker on top of Not, yeah. Anyways. Okay, but um, we what have. What is Adabox? Well, we have, I'm glad you asked. We have this little video. Oh, great. If you do an Adabox subscription, um, you'll definitely be doing a lot of stuff with CircuitPython too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we um, like CircuitPython. We have we we tend to have CircuitPython and make code, so there's a lot of beginner stuff for people who are like just learning how to program, and then CircuitPython, which is great for people who can type. Some people are like not re quite ready to type, but they can uh, do the make code projects. And then we have CircuitPython projects. So we have a nice blend of super beginner and intermediate, and maybe some advanced projects. So there's something for everybody. Oh, you know, and I'll answer one question about Adabox that I saw on Discord. So you just started your Adabox subscription because we're now up to seven. You can go back in time, sort of, 
and you can get box one and two and collect them. Yeah, we so, have them in the store. Yeah. You won't get the collectibles uh, or some of the extras because those are subscriber-only uh, yeah. bonuses, but you will get the electronics projects that let you complete all the projects for that in a box. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, before we do new products, which is very... Python focus this week. Codes Python, party, anything that's in store besides gift certificates and aid box, 10% off. They did it's time, ready? Yes. Okay. New, 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 new. Okay. It's only one new. It's actually just a one new. We're going to do just one new product. It's one long new. Okay. So on theme, what is it this week? The theme of the week is the Python party. And we have the new Metro M4 Express. We had hundreds of people signed up to get notified. We made about 100 of them. We put them in the store. We're going to be making more. But the Metro M4 Express, choo-choo, it's here. Get out of the way. Mm -hmm. It's a steamroll, yeah. It's a Cortex M4, 120 megahertz processor with 512K of flash, 192K of RAM, in this nice QFN package. This is a the big sister chip, the NR51N. Um, it's got some really cool peripherals. It's got a, a parallel camera capture for uh, camera input. Two DACs, um, it's got analog inputs, it's got uh, lots of digital I.O., it's got lots of DMA, <laughs> it's got I2C, it's got SPI, it doesn't have I2S, which we, no, no sorry, it does. This one does. This one does have I2S, yeah, it has I2S and we bought the M-Clock pin out. Sorry, yep. I forgot the other board does it. It has a MOSFET on the back. Yeah, this is our tribute board. MOSFET passed away in March. So right as I was finishing this board. So this is, uh, this is his tribute there. Okay. He's there. He lives yeah. forever yeah. Mm -hmm. in this board. Uh, so got I2S, it's got the I squared C, SPI, UART, CIRCOMS. Mm -hmm. But the big thing about it is it's just incredibly fast and has a ton of RAM in particular. Yes, and RAM. Yeah. Boy, isn't that exciting. Yeah. Uh, so on, on our, on, you know, it's four times more. It's more, more than four times. 32, it's like... At least for CircuitPython, it's times. currently four. Yeah. Oh, because you have to do the extended RAM. Yeah. Um, we'll yeah. you get there. Yes. Um, you know, in Arduino, we never really needed 32K of RAM. We're like, well, it's a lot. We, you know, we never used that much. But because in CircuitPython, it's interpreted, you really need that RAM because all mm -hmm. of your code and all the objects you're creating, all everything lives in RAM. So you really need it. Yes. And what's nice about the M4 is it's like you just never have to worry. Well, I've so far not had to worry about running I'm, out of. I'm sure people will. But. Well, they'll do more advanced, more advanced projects. Mm -hmm. But so. Um, we're starting with the Metro M4, which is our Arduino compatible shape. We also have an Arduino core for it that works quite well. So yep. for people who are like, look, I just want a very, very fast Arduino you know, chip that can uh, decode MP3s natively. It can do, again, this uh, parallel camera capture. Mm -hmm. It's just like hecka fast, uh, tons of flash memory. Maybe you can put an RTOS on there if you want because you just got so much extra room. There's a um, floating point unit, mm -hmm. a proper DSP and floating point. So what what is what's so great about this for Circuit Python? RAM. <laughs> RAM. It's not um, a RAM. RAM. Like RAM floating it. hardware floating points. Hardware floating points. Yeah. Yeah. So many memory issues people are running into. Like once people are making bigger projects with bigger yeah. code, and this is the answer to that. Yeah. Yeah. If oh, you long want. integers. You have room for long integers. Oh, because the, the the current yes. version we have only thirty bit. That's right, integer. and now we can have indefinite length integers, which is a feature of Python, oh, and wow. we can turn that on yep. now. And then so you can turn on. Well, there's going to be things that we turn on. Also, mm -hmm. one of the things um, I've seen a lot of people request is async I/O, mm -hmm. which is the don't use threading. You're just going to hurt yourself. <laughs> this is right. something uh, alternative async mm -hmm. I/O, which was added I think in, in three four, and that's something that we're Python thinking of adding. Four, yeah. Yeah, Katniss yeah. friend Wolf is working on it. Oh, his plan is to have it done by PyCon. So Kat and Wolf, that's we, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so we will, um, yeah, we will have that, have that going. Okay, and mm -hmm. and 120 megahertz does that does it help? It's, oh yeah. yeah, it's like it feels faster. It, it's definitely snappier as well. Snappier and oh, one more thing I forgot to add. Oh, it's got built-in crypto capabilities, which we haven't mm -hmm. yet written libraries for, but we will. Like true random number generator, AES. We use that. Public. Oh, use, you do the random? Yeah, when I re-added random we we use that to seed import random the random module starts with a, a truly random a true number. randomness that's cool and yep. it, yeah there's some crypto stuff and it's got qspi mm -hmm. the q stands for quad yep and it's Read not those bits four times it's not just four times faster because there's four io pins it's actually much faster because spi you can't clock faster than like 12 megahertz megahertz on the 21 and on the 51 how fast did you get qspi going too fast that I couldn't measure. 
your, for your speed, <laughs> you better go. So about like 50 megahertz, I think, is what yeah. we got here. You can do 50 to 70 megahertz, which is which is really sweet, maybe 60, so like half the, the clock speed. Yeah. So it's very, very fast, so you don't have any delay reading from flash at all. I mean, like right. it's like zippy. Very fast. And there's actually a cool thing about the M4 that we haven't done yet, which allows you to actually execute memory directly from QSPI. I'm not sure how or if we could use that in CircuitPython. In Arduino, you could, you could have flash that's your program could be in right. the quads flash but it's, it's yeah. interesting it's interesting capability um let's answer a question from the yeah. chat what are you using for the random source the hardware to random number generator i'm not sure how it works so the, probably the random number generator inside just because this is how they often do it is they have um a back bias diode and there's there's certain kinds of noise that comes from semiconductors, which I don't remember. Like there's like Johnson noise, and there's like <laughs> white noise and pink noise, and like I don't remember all the different kinds of noise. But there's some noise that you can get that is it is uh, white. It's truly distributed randomly. So it probably just has like one of these back bias diodes, and it's it's reading the fluctuations um, of the current through that and using mm -hmm. that to create the random number. All right, do you want to share the board? There you go. I think we should. Yeah. Okay. So we've got. M4 with the lovely layout, got the kitty. Uh, we went with two whole headers for everything here. We have an SWD um, connector. If you have a J Link, you can. Uh, <laughs> it's big! <laughs> you have, if you have a J Link, you can um, program uh, and debug this chip if you want. I mean, it's a Cortex M4. You can. There's a lot of real time operating systems that you can. Uh, download and probably compile mm -hmm. and get it working for this. Or you could help us on CircuitPython. Or you can do CircuitPython. This is almost the same size as the one that JP made for Maker Faire. <laughs> True. Yeah, I know. Just yeah. want to hold it. Uh, you've got all those pins. We've got tons of PWMs. Mm -hmm. uh, got the two DACs, you know, the standard Arduino pins. It's 3.3 volt logic. Um, otherwise, it's pretty much the same layout as the Metro that we've had so far. I tested experience. it with all the shields that we have, and as long as you set the shield to be 3 volt logic, uh, it works perfectly fine. All the shields uh, we got working. Found some bugs too while we were at it, <laughs> which is fun. Uh, every pin can be an interrupt. Uh, I've got, I think, seven analog pins, and we've got a couple cool demos coming out, like with the video capture. We got oh, it hooked yeah. up to like, a little, you know, raw video cam, like an OV seventy six seventy, and we have it um, capturing um, images and then displaying it on TFT. Are the so. headers pre-soldered? Oh yeah, this comes fully assembled, just like you see here. This is from the store actually. So it, it does say beta just because I wanted to be paranoid in case we change the pinouts, but I don't think we will. I think we're pretty satisfied mm -hmm. with the pins we've got, but we didn't get every single possible peripheral out. So there's, there's trade-offs like the quadrature encoder. We did not, mm -hmm. I think there was a conflict with the QSPI. You could have one or the right. other. And I think we're like, well, you know, quadrature encoders are cool, but the QSPI is gonna be used all the time. And right. you can make a quadrature encoder library that would do it with yep. timers. Yep. Okay. Well, so that's and okay. CircuitPython is an alpha for this as well. So when you get your board, go to GitHub and or follow the Welcome to CircuitPython guide and, and update it. You'll get new, better stuff. May make it faster. May give it more RAM. So. Yeah. So keep, the, keep checking because yeah. we we're still working on it. We're yeah. working on a lot. Constantly. Every week or two, there's going to be a new circuit. Python you're going to see constant, especially now that we got all the beta testers are going to get it. There's going to mm -hmm. be it's going to be a Python bug party. Um, that's that's going to okay. be fun. And that's new products. Yeah, new. Okay. Uh, don't forget the code is Python party. I think we still have some in the store. Do you want to um, do like a recap? Or? Well, no, because we only have one product. Okay. <laughs> recap is that. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, we have, let's do like one quick top secret and then we're going to open up for questions. So, um, while we're doing top secret, make sure you're in discord and get ready. Mm -hmm. Um, so Lady Ada, what is this thing that is top secret that no one should ask questions about? This is so top secret. This is a little ink tricolor display. I ended up displaying a Blinka. That was fun. Yay. So these boards will be coming soon and, uh, we might have a circuit Python library for it. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe. And then I got one. Not out yet? Um, we're working on this. We'll be releasing this probably in a week or so. Trevor, see you on the Adamagio. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's Adamagio on your desk? Yeah, so this is the start of some A for AR. So all this stuff. He's your new friend. All right, so this is our beta. It'll be out soon? Yeah. Okay. Let's answer some questions. Make sure you go to adafruit.it slash discord, and we'll 
start answering them. This is where you go. Um, so I think one of the questions, it's not a, it's not out yet, but you can answer it. Um, are you going to do an M4 Mega? Yeah, we want to do an M4 Mega. Okay. We're probably going to use, um, I think it was the N chip, which will have one megabyte of flash and 256K of RAM. So even a bigger boost in memory, and maybe we'll put a bigger QSPI flash chip. It'll be more expensive, but it'll be like tons of pins. We'll have like 50 pins, um, you know, every possible pin peripheral brought out, and um, tons of RAM, and ton like we'll basically max it out. Um, I think, it, you know, the, the SAMD21 actually didn't come in a package that had enough pins to make a mega. The, the largest pin package was 64. Which like you know, which is what we use for this. So it's pink, the pink matched. Yeah, it's just matched. Uh, yeah, it's purple. Yeah, it's um, purple. And then, uh, but so but the SAMD fifty one comes in a hundred twenty eight pin and a hundred pin package, so we can. Mm -hmm. There's enough pins we can make a, a mega. I think we were talking about some names, maybe. Yeah, I had some terrible names. Those are the best. The, it would be the M four MAGA. No. <laughs> Cause that, but that you can't, because it sounds like mega, but I guess it, that's yeah. taken. The only thing is this and then, mega, it's a, while, it's a while off, so yeah, we have time to come up with it. We're thinking of maglev. Maglev. <laughs> you want to, yeah. like, metro theme? Yeah, we were thinking Grand Central, just to make sure that's okay. Mongo. Yeah, so we had go. ideas. There's also, I did, train. I did train research for, like, the biggest train ever, and it's, like, <laughs> a terrible name. It was, like, crashing a crash train or something. Um, so here's a question. Is the M4 battery friendly? Yeah, I mean, it's still a Cortex processor. Actually... Something interesting on the Metro, if you look, there's an inductor. There's actually a built-in buck converter that you can enable on uh, the 7051 to put into a lower power mode. I don't remember the exact current draw off the top of my head. I think it's maybe about, like, probably 40 milliamps when you're, like, cranking it and doing everything. Um, but you can put the 1.8 megahertz, sorry, 1.8 volt core into a low power mode with this buck converter. So instead of using a linear three to 1.8 converter, you can buck convert it. However, your analog inputs become really noisy because mm. like, it's just, your your reference is just not as clean. Um, that said, it's on there. Um, okay. We have to do some more battery measurements, but yeah. it's still an ARM Cortex processor. It's not going to be like a Raspberry Pi 700 mega, you know, milliamps or whatever. You're, right. you're not running at a gigahertz. It's, it's, it's faster, but it's only like four times faster. <laughs> yeah, okay, I can go through some of these. Um, we usually put the Eagle files up once we're shipping, so that goes up pretty Yeah, soon. they're going to go up in a couple days. Um, was it designed to look like a Metro train card? Actually, yeah. more like a tra just a general transit card. Transit card. Because um, all you know, these Mac stripes that are... I'm going to go to the right. back and show. Well, if you want to. Or yeah, and twist it on the M4. I think they're talking about the networking. Yeah, yeah. so it looks like a transit card. Yeah. General well, transit card. Stripe card. Okay. Yeah. Um, next, I just wanted to take advantage of the green screen. Yeah. Uh, next mm -hmm. up... Uh, their Pi TFT reliably working on a Pi Zero build, um, but it's super washed out. Any suggestions to fix it? Um, you can post the forums. It could be like a backlight issue um, or like a something you know with your, your power supply that could be fixed. Hard to tell without seeing photos. Okay, which uses more batteries and for Raspberry Pi? The Raspberry Pi is definitely going to require yeah. more power no matter what. It is a ARM 7 core running Linux. Okay. Like 20 times. The more <laughs> Easily. More. It's a yeah. lot. It's a lot. I mean, like, it's a uh, powerful machine. Yeah. yeah, this one might be for forums, but later maybe you can yeah, take a Yeah, I think the time it. of the connection, I... Th Blue Fruit for the... Uh, so, Doug, maybe post that one up in the forums. I think we're going to have yeah. to ask a couple questions. I think, I think that's... Yeah, because it depends a little bit on how you connect it. But, yeah, usually we don't... A lot of our hardware and libraries, it, it's... If your hardware isn't connected, it's not going to be as good at telling you that it, it mm -hmm. can't tell if it's broken or waiting a long time or just not connected uh do you sell any pro products that use magnetic levitation well we have magnets and we can do some stuff like that but those those products are usually um they're made by like the millions yeah and they're they're hard for us to get that would be at a reasonable price we don't have a kit but i know people have made you yeah. know mag magnetic levitation projects with our staff okay uh what's the qsp i used on the metro m4 the flash yes okay mm -hmm. The twisted one is a, twisted is a Python library for networking. Okay. So I think you're skipping it because you don't know what that is. Oh no, I thought no, I think um, I said twisted for M4 before, but maybe or maybe I just thought I. I thought you meant it's like oh, it's twisted. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, uh, it's in the library. Yeah. We're not getting the networking anytime soon, uh, and it sounds. 
quite hard. Okay. Yeah, you're not going to get like NumPy or like something like Yeah, like Twisted massive. is not a small language or a small library either. I think, what, you know, we got Laura basically working without LoRaWAN. We got mm-hmm. the RFM69s. We might look at like, some basic Ethernet support. Yep. And Bluetooth. Um, and Bluetooth working on with, but we're, we're starting off small. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, how hard is it to detect audio going to a speaker? Would it simply be detecting there is there audio or not? Can you use Pi Maroni Automation Fat to detect audio using Raspberry Pi? Yeah, you, you would just look for the analog voltage. Um, you'd put a resistor divider and just see if that voltage goes above zero or above the midline. That's, it's not too hard. You just have to read an analog voltage, though. Okay, it's circuit Python based off Python. Yes, it's based off what? What's the version? Four point three. So the yeah, the API is based on three point four. Three point four is the core. But they fully re-implemented it, so it's not. There's no C Python code in it. Yeah. Actually. Okay. Any plans to replace the Teensy on your Metro testers with the one twenty pin SMD fifty one and dual SD card controllers? You know, the Teensy we have them in stock, and we don't have a plan to make something that same size. Maybe when we get like the Mega Metro and four, it would be a good alternative. But right now, like our testers work really well with the TNC, and I like the little SD card slot, so I'm happy to stick with that. Like it's it, they're they're lovely boards and they're super fast. So for bit banging the SWD connection, like we can program the M4 in about three seconds, which is really fast. Um, what's the exact number of people who visit your website? Well, per month, I don't have the exact number offhand, um, but it's over two million a month, and we have um, an Adafruit dot com slash about there's a pdf with stats and we usually put the stats of our website we're we're weird like that <laughs> um let's see uh okay here we ask that one and okay let's give something away those are the questions all right um folks can keep the party going now if they want to they can just hang out in discord in discord mm-hmm. where the python tonight, party is always happening dan kenny and scott are not going to be in discord so please take care of discord wherever they're not there yes yep. they'll be there later but not right now um we're yeah. gonna give away tonight we're gonna give away a metro m4 <gasps> really wow. yeah right. okay what are the rules for the trivia the rules are you have to love the import no uh you have <laughs> to wait hold on wait i have to go this way to you're turn, going this I have way to turn on the phone you can turn on the phone there's a lot of chairs and they all have these like flanges and yeah. the yeah. rules are you can only win if you've never won a prize on this show before only one winner for my lifetime on this show uh the first person to call this pay phone and i pick it up and you answer the three magic questions is the winner the first magic question is what's your name the second magic question is where you're calling from and the third magic question is what's a project you're working on or you want to work on if you can answer those questions without hanging up on me We'll award you the Metro M4. And a pro tip is to turn your audio down while you make the call. Yeah, that'll help. Because you'll hear it over the phone first. Back in the day when there was like live talk shows. I thought I was going to have to do a filler for this. Okay. Okay. Hello, you've reached Ask the Engineer. Hello. Hello. Hello, you've reached Ask the Engineer and you're the fabulous winner of a Metro M4. Oh my God, that's wonderful. (laughs) It's wonderful. What's your name and where you're calling from? Uh, this is David. I'm calling from Queens. Hey, David from Queens. Wow, you're really close. Uh, <laughs> too close. <laughs> that's why it sounds so good. Yeah, that's why you sound, you sound really great. Um, so, Dave from Queens, what's a project you're working on or you want to work on? Um, I'm actually working um, with a, a group called Hat Rabbit on a project for Hammer Step, which is incorporating electronics into um, Irish Step Dancers. Wow, Irish Step Dancing. Well... Maybe you could use this Metro M4. I don't know. It could be useful. Um, we'd love to send you one. All you have to do is email support at adafruit.com. That's S-U-P-P-O-R-T at adafruit.com. And say, hey, it's David from Queens. And we're across the bridge. And I want that Metro M4, which is product number, what was it, Phil? Oh, uh, 3382. Product number 3382. And that way they'll know exactly what to send you. And then uh, that sounds like a cool uh, dance troupe that you're part of. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, if you have any uh, YouTube clips of this, like, our step dancing, post in the Discord. We'll check it mm-hmm. out. Cool, yeah. Our yeah. step dancing with NeoPixels. Yeah, 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 you need NeoPixels, yeah. we say. Everyone here says you need more <laughs> LEDs. Um, okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for calling. Congratulations on winning. Have a great night. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye. <coughs> Success. Okay. All right. Seven M4s in stock. Yeah, we ran out. Well, the, we have spares. Don't worry. Yeah. yeah. Of course I'm running out. But yes, if you want one and you're still watching and you want 10% off, you should pick one up right now. And New window. Code. Do it at the same time. 
Okay. Well, that's our show for tonight. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Katney. Thank you, Scott. We did it. Thanks for having us. Right on time. Okay. Yeah. Blinka? On time, on budget. Perfect. Yeah. Um, okay, so as we wrap up here, um, we're going to show this cake. Um, oh. Let's see how it works out. So we got a cake. You have a cake? Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna, how do you do this then? Well, I think I'm just going to go to the hover cam this way. Okay. And uh, if you can back that out one yeah. more. Okay. Um, we're going to back I this will, out. Uh, yeah. I'm going to back this out. Okay. We're going to make some room. Get, get this all out of the way. Yeah. yeah, don't trip and <laughs> fall and break the right. Yeah, so we'll we'll put up the videos and more, but this is Blink of the Snake Cake. So we'll we'll devour this later. Um, uh, folks can take a look. It's this button. Which one? Yeah. There we go. We did a video of just this, <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, we worked with a cake maker, and I think when we cut it open, it'll bleed, but I have to... <laughs> no, I mean, well, they said what type of, you know... You ge- told them you wanted red liquid no, it has ribs, gel sitting? Yeah. <laughs> and I think it screams, but... Um, I like that the little, like, the little, yeah, the little ribbing is like candy dots. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. Okay. The problem is, like, nobody wants to eat, like, the eye. That's the one part you're like, hey, somebody's eye. Wow. Well. <laughs> like oh, she's looking at you. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, that's the cake. Yeah, so that's our show for this evening, everyone. Um, Thank you, Adafruit team members. Thank you, everyone in the Discord chat. Thank you, all the Adafruit team members. Um, Don't forget the code is Python Party. It'll keep going until... Yay, Python Party. And um, we'll see everybody next week. All right, thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Wonderful show. Here is your moment of Zener.